Hey everyone, so we're at the Intel event, and I am joined now by, is it fair to say an exo -seer? Is that fair to say? No, it's an overclocking celebrity. Overclocking celebrity, <laughs> Stepanzi. Yes. And uh, what is, what's, your, uh, what's your dual SLI score on Time Spy Extreme? I don't have one. So I, okay. <laughs> I, need, I need to get in on that. Okay. Definitely. Well, technically I'm then more qualified, I guess. Oh, that's... I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no Step comment. So Stepanzi's here. He, he actually, uh, you've been at the G Skill event at Computex. You've done a lot of extreme overclocking. We have an LN2 pot in front of me. What is what's CPU? What's the motherboard that we're talking about today? Uh, we have the Asus Hero uh, motherboard, and that's uh, Z390. And then we also have the uh, Intel 9900K, the new uh, ninth gen processor. And so I, I guess. Let's just start with the frequency and then go from there. Before that, this video is brought to you by the NDXT E-Series Power Supplies. The E-Series PSUs are high-end power supplies with real-time digital voltage and temperature monitoring, per-rail wattage measurements, and data logging functionality for power usage. The E-Series PSUs also come with a 10-year warranty all the way down to the 500-watt unit, and they run fully modular and with silent fan operating modes. Learn more at the link below. What, do you, what have you had it running at? stable um, well the other day I had it up running about six eight um, and that's uh, all eight cores on the uh, on the chip so it's not just one core pushing as much frequency so all eight cores at basically six eight you know not bad yeah today not right now since I'm having a lot of condensation issues I had to switch boards and kind of get it up and running so we're running about six gig right now how do you feel about the t the the soldered Tim as opposed to deleting and going that route it saves me a lot of time to be honest <laughs> What, I have very big hands, so trying to go and wipe that little processor and cleaning it up underneath it, it's, it's, it's actually much better. I'm actually very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, uh, thermally, I mean, how does this perform versus when you deal it and just do some kind of paste? Is there any noticeable difference for extreme overclocking? Oh, it's a huge difference because usually we have to delete or delid, mm -hmm. and then we have to put the paste underneath the processor. Then. When we're actually benching, we have to worry about the paste underneath, and then we have to worry about it on top. So you have two places where it could fail, and now you only have one paint. So one place. So it's much, much, much better. It saves us a lot of time. I mean, I only get as much time as I can to do this, so it increases my time, which increases my uh, good mood, I guess you could say. <laughs> right. So for uh, you were at 6.8 the other day. Um, the board, you're, you're on a, you don't have an XOC BIOS here, do you? No, I don't have an, X, that's one of the issues why I'm only at 6 gig. You have to set certain voltages to be able to get the temperature down to minus 196. Right now we're basically running about minus 100 to about 115. So if I had an XOC BIOS, I could run minus 196 and do 6, 7, 6, 8. And is, that a, is that a cold bug issue or what is that? Uh, yeah, what will happen at about minus 120, the, the system will just completely stop working and you won't be able to do anything. So um, with those extra volt voltages that you change, you can actually get it and then be able to push it much, much colder. So so for uh, for the system we have here, I guess, yeah. uh, do you want to, yeah, let's add some more Allen too. Yeah. Uh, so if, for the score... Work. You've got right now, you have a 2664 up for all core CPU and Cinebench R15. Yep. And the frequency for that, you've stepped it down, as you said, you don't have an XOC BIOS. Yep. So you're at, what, 6 gigahertz? Yeah, 6 gigahertz on all 8. Pretty easy. Yeah, pretty pretty damn good score on Cinebench for that. Yeah, not too bad. Can't complain about that. Uh, how about uh, memory overclocking? I mean, has it has it changed at all on this platform? This is E390 now, so any differences there? Um, it's, it's actually, it's very similar. Um, I expect to see... Uh, some more frequencies. Um, usually as the uh, maturity for the process goes, we usually see higher frequencies. So I expect it to be better on this platform than the old platform. So, so is, that, is that just IMC quality or increasing or something like that? Yes, or? pretty much. Um, we'll see like, and, and also um, just as the, the platform matures, you, you'll start seeing just, it's as people get used to it, the manufacturers just build a better product. It, it's just one of those things that it's just like a process flow. So. Right, right. Uh, okay, so for overclocking in general, I guess the process is always, the workflow is pretty much the same as always, right? Yeah, it's, it's very similar. So then, uh, and uh, solder is the only major change, it sounds like, in terms of what you're doing, because uh, you don't have to deal it anymore. Well, the two more cores, too. So we went from six cores to eight cores now. Right. And the eight cores is, I mean, to run six eight at eight cores is, is pretty beefy. <laughs> I mean, back in the day when you had, at like, what, Haswell E, you're talking... You're lucky to get what I'm getting right now, so I can get six eight. That's 800 megahertz difference. That's amazing. So, it's pretty cool. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can we can we take a look at BIOS too and just see? Sure. I know. So just to go ahead and reboot it, I guess if you want to jump into BIOS or whatever you need to do, but just to, to sort of. Uh, get a call on my settings, huh? <laughs> just, to, just to preface it for the audience, this is at an Intel event, and it's pretty pretty quick and dirty setup, right? We don't even have an XOC BIOS here. There's actually no insulation, too, so don't try this at home. <laughs> right, so, so don't judge too hard is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't have any of the extra voltages, so I basically have to... Uh, kind of just use the basic ones. I mean, it's it's not too difficult. It's just a couple of settings and you're ready to go. And so we'll, we'll take B-roll of this for uh, editing and after, but let's walk through what you have. So this is the ASUS BIOS. Most of the viewers have seen this before, I think. And for, let's let's go through your settings. So for core ratio, you're at 60, all core. What else, what else do you have set up? Let's see, we have 60 on all cores. I, I think for this one, just uh, the cache is just 50. And then uh, I was running about 1.7 volts, about 1.9 on DRAM. We're running about 3,600, uh, but we're running uh, tight latency, so CL12, 12. 12. Um, VCCIO, 125, system agent, 12. Usually we push these much higher, so around the around 1.4 range when we're going at minus 196. Have you, have you ever encountered CPU degradation or IMC degradation from pushing these too high? Uh, not really. Um, most of the chips that I see are pretty good. Usually we have more issues because of the actual, um, I don't know, uh, condensation. Mm -hmm. So you see to here today in the background, there's a lot of condensation. Those are the things that usually kill stuff. So, Any other settings you've changed in here? Not much, actually. Just uh, maybe memory. If you go down into uh, DRAM timing control, see we're running CL1212. A lot different than... Uh, normal desktop user. This is a uh, bench time as we call it. Mm. So we're running about 3600. This is a four dim board versus a two dim board so the memory is not going to be able to go as, as uh, high or the performance is not going to be as good as a two dim board because of just the way the board's laid out. Is that just a trace length or trace layout or yeah, something? basically. So then uh, I saw you had the cache ratio set to 50, right? How, how much does the cache ratio or the, uh, let's go back to a uh, previous page. Uh, yeah, cache ratio. So how much, in your experience, does that impact your scores? I mean, if you ran uh, this... Quite a bit, actually. You have to um, you have to have it pretty close to the processor. It's usually good. Mm -hmm. So if you're at, like, 6 gig, anywhere between 5 and 55, I mean, you're never going to see the cache go over uh, the mm -hmm. processor. So, but yeah, I mean, I've see, so when I was running about 6.7, 6.8, we were probably about 6.1 on the cache, so... Cool. So, well, that's the uh, 9900K under LN2, I guess. First one I've seen. And thank you for joining me, Mr. Stepanzi. Hey, it was a pleasure. Overclocking celebrity. I can say I've met one now. Yeah. <laughs> Check. We'll, we'll link one of his, I don't know, we'll link like your, you have a YouTube channel or Twitter or anything uh, like that? I stopped doing it, actually. Okay, so we'll link hit one of his scores below. That's right. what we'll do. We'll promote one of his scores. <laughs> and, uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, as always. We'll see you all next time.